Hi, in this tutorial I'll show you how to make a side-scrolling game using the shoot em up kit. So first I'll create a game and go to a new project. There's templates or you can copy a project to give you a head start in making a game but for this I'll use an empty project. So first it needs a name, it can be anything and I'll leave all the other values, the camera and screen resolution and everything, just leave those as defaults for now. So when this loads you get all the different editors. Um, to build the level I'll go to the level editor here. So the grid is to help you with positioning and um, there's also a snap to grid option for positioning items that you place. Um, but I will hide that for now to make it easier to see what's going on. So first I'll place a player by going to player in the tools menu. There's a lot that come with the kit or you can add your own in. So if I add the ship and place it there. So you can move up and down with um, if you want to adjust the position. And I'm going to rotate it to get it heading along the level for our side scroller. So if I use the green to turn and then this is using this rotate gizmo um, then this one to face it forward it's now facing along the screen. If I wanted to do um, a top down game you can rotate it this way and then you've got the top down view. You can also do the positioning in the general pane here. Um, I will use this to straighten it up because if it's pointing at a slight angle then any bullets fired will go off at that slight angle and may not hit the enemies that you're aiming at. So the properties this has, it has a player definition. Um, there's a list of these that you can choose from. I'll use the default for now. If you want to see what's in them, you can go to the arrow, this default one. You've got lives, health, action when killed, that sort of thing to set up. Um, the input definition, this is the controls that you use. I'm going to change this to four direction, X, Y, so horizontal and vertical and fire. And the movement definition, this is how it moves. I'm going to change this to axis plus constant x so that will be up, down, left, right but with a constant forward movement. If you want to change the speed that it travels at and the constant speed um, that's all in this movement definition. You can change the maximum speed there if you want it to go faster and you can change the constant velocity here if you want that to be different. So for now I'll leave those as they are and I'll add an NPC and just place that over here. So already you can test the game. Very simple but it's on its way. So for now I'll go to the level settings here and the music and click the bin icon to get rid of that just so it's easier to talk over. So I'll add some scenery now. I can increase the layer here. Um, the depth is the distance between layers. So if I go to the next layer to place the background it will be set back from the player and NPC and they won't be colliding. So if I place a cave wall back there, um, I use the mouse wheel to zoom out so I can place more of these. I can copy and paste that. And carry on as long as you want to build a level. Um, there's options of snap to object, snap to grid to make that easier. So 
I'll add some more scenery if I put some rocks in. And you've got scale and rotate if you want to add a few and make them look slightly different. You can have them at the different angles. I can copy and paste and maybe have this one a bit bigger. Turn it round a bit. You can get slightly different effects that way. Um, maybe add a rock cylinder there. Make that a bit bigger. Uh, just, just start building up the scenery like that. I'll move that one down a bit so you don't hit it. So um, you can also add a light, get some lighting effects. Um, I'll increase the range to brighten things up a bit more. You can see how that's lighting up the level, maybe change the colour. So you can see in, in real time the effect that that light's going to have. So this entity we placed here doesn't show up now against that background. Something you can do is use this replace entity. So if I swap that for the yellow one, that shows up a bit better now. Um, maybe a better weapon for the player. If you go to the weapon tab, the moment it's set to the green bullet. So you can create your own definitions or use the ones that are provided. Um, but if I go for bullet fast, if we try that now, it's starting to look a bit better. So if I add a camera now to track the player, I can just place this anywhere and we want it to track player one. And if I, the tracking style, we want it to follow the player and the camera movement, we want it to follow the player as well. I'll also do lock the camera in the Y direction. That means that the camera will move horizontally with the player, but be fixed vertically. If I try this now, it's starting to, you can see that the camera is being tracked. I'll move that player down slightly as well. So what you can do to get a better view while you're debugging is go back to the camera. If you have trouble finding anything, there's always this select item. You get a lot of things in a level. It can be hard to find things quickly. So this tracking distance here, if you set that to something big, I'll move it out to 500, you get a view of the whole level. The camera set right back and it can be really helpful when you're building a level to get a view of the whole thing. So I'll move that back in for now. Try about 180. And this target offset, this is how far from the player the camera is pointing. So if I get the camera to point slightly ahead of the player, the player will be further to the left on the screen and you'll have you'll be able to see more of the level ahead of the player. So if I set that to 80, the player will be more towards the left now. So if I move that down, um, yeah, to stop the player disappearing off the screen, because at the moment the player can just shoot straight off like that, um, I'll add an active area. So if I add a trigger, place it around, place it somewhere around the middle. Similar Y to the player. I'm still on layer one here. I need to be back onto layer zero. So I'll do that again. It wants to be the same layer as the player. And set this to be 
a box, um, set it to about 500 to about 130. That should cover most of the level. Um, we can check this later, just to make sure it's right. Then go back to the player and set its active area to that trigger we've just created. We want the area to be a fixed position. You could set it relative to the camera so it would move with the camera. And we want the player to stop when it comes to the edge. So if I try that now, that's too too high res compared to the player. Get them on the same way. See, that's 140. Oh, the player's not inside it, that's the problem. Make it bigger. Try again. See, the player's restricted top and bottom, it won't move any further. There's this debug option here if you're trying to set up triggers as well. If that's on, you can actually see the trigger when you try the level. You can also see the collision boxes around the players to see what's colliding. And when you come back to the other turret, you get an event log which tells you what's collided during that session. Right, so now with the layer back on zero, I can add some more enemies. The one we've put in so far has the default AI of fire and chase the player. So what we could do is make that move minus X so that will just move horizontally and could copy and paste, add a couple more and another one. And if I try that have the three. So if I set up another wave, I'll take the debug off for now. What I can do is add a trigger that's activated by the player and if I make that a box again, but this time we want it to be tall and make it a bit deeper. and add another NPC. I'll add a red one. Back there. And that NPC I'll make follow a spline shape. So you can just draw whatever time shape you want with this spline tool and then escape to stop at the end. If I go back to that, that ship there, and the AI, I'll leave it firing, and instead of chase, I'll make it follow spline shape. Follow spline shape actually follows the shape, whatever the starting position, rather than following the actual line. And that's the spline I created. And I'm going to deactivate this. So if I remove, uncheck the enabled box there, then that won't be active. And if I go to this trigger here, actions, I'll add an action for it, which is when it's triggered, activate that new enemy character. So now, when the player hits this trigger, that NPC will be activated. So to show that's happening, I'm going to go back to the camera and set it right out. And I'll also put the debug on so you can see the trigger. So now, when you hit that, there's the new NPC following the spline. 
and the last thing I'll do is place a trigger at the end of the level here and again make it a box and change its shape and this one the action I'm triggered again Let's let you close that. Okay, you can open and close these and add different action slots. I'm triggered. Activate. No, no not activate for this one. Level complete. So this trigger now, when you hit that, it will be level complete. So if I try that... It will reset. Now, when I hit that, it triggers the other one. And when I hit that, you get level complete. So if I try that now with the camera, reset back to 180. and debug off you can see the game so far the new NPC is triggered and a hit level complete so that's an introduction to creating a side-scrolling game you can continue to build on that as a, a basic game and I hope this helps